Ladies and gentlemen, what's up and welcome back to Chris on the Mic. On this episode today we will be discussing the dawn of DC and the comic book movie universe, also known as the DCCU. Uh, this topic is going to be split into several different episodes along the way, discussing the upcoming projects and movies that Warner Brothers is making with the DC properties. And today we're going to really start off with Batman v Superman, which is going to be the center point and the launching point for the DCCU. So let's get it started. Batman v Superman, DCCU. Let's go. So today we're going to talk about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and its impact towards the DCCU and how important it is to Warner Brothers launching this comic book universe and trying to basically play catch up to Marvel. But, you know, it's so much, you know, standing with this movie. Uh, every single movie that they have planned coming after it basically depends on this movie being not only a financial success, but a critical success. And it's just a lot of writing on this movie. I just want to just talk about the importance. Um, the date that it comes out, March 25th, 2016. So, you know, we're still about a, a little under a year away from this film coming out. Uh, it wrapped up filming last year in December. So after that, we now know uh, we've re they've, they've released a couple of promo pictures. And uh, just not just recently, they released a trailer. Now, it was a teaser trailer. It did have mixed re uh, mis a mixed reaction towards it. Now, the mixed reaction, personally, I believe, was a factor of the Star Wars on um, the Force Awakens trailer. The second teaser trailer that came out of that was released the same week. When Star Wars comes out, usually you just better stand clear and give it a cut, give it about a week to breathe before you release your trailer. But unfortunately, somebody, of course, leaked the Batman v Superman teaser trailer, therefore forcing Warner Brothers to do the smart, the smart thing was basically, hey, we got to release this as soon as possible before everybody just looks at the um, cell phone bootleg version of the trailer and not see it in its true quality. Me personally, I waited for it to be released because I want to see this movie in all of its glory. And uh, I thought it was awesome. I thought the teaser trailer was great. I thought the, the tone of the movie was right where I wanted the DC um, comic book universe to be and right when I wanted this movie to be. Uh, it was dark. It was gritty. It had this uh, sense of gloom mixed with fantasy. Um, you could tell that Zack Snyder, the director, has full control over this movie, more so than he did with his past project in 2000. Now, while this is following within the that um following within the timeline of Man of Steel, it's not a direct sequel. Let's all remember that this is not Man of Steel two, or this is not meant to be some sort of resemblance of Man of Steel two. But this does happen after Man of Steel. Uh, this is a movie that's basically setting up the Justice League movies and setting up the universe. It's just it's just gonna play that important part to it. And I just want to further on discuss is that why we need to remember what this movie is and what it represents let's remember that this movie is not going to be it's going to be something different than what we've seen before than what we even seen with marvel don't forget marvel did it a different way they had a separate strategy what marvel did which i also thought was very smart and it worked perfectly for them was that they released different like a separate movie for almost every single part of member of their adventures they released a separate movie for the hulk with the incredible hulk which is still within that universe that originally starred um, Edward Norton before they went to Mark Ruffalo. And they released Iron Man. They released Thor. And they released Captain America. So they had those four standing members. And then they sprinkled in Hawkeye and Black Widow within those movies to create the Avengers ultimately and it worked you know it was incredible build up and now Marvel is basically the king of the playland the king of the playland the playland right now where it comes to comic book movies and deservingly so Marvel is on top and they've earned it um DC is playing catch up you know um you know Christopher Nolan ended his dark um dark knight trilogy 
uh, in 2012 at the Dark Knight Rises, you know, legendary trilogy, one of the best trilogies of all time, quite frankly. And, you know, he'll always be commended for doing that and bringing, you know, DC back to prominence. Because that's what that those films did. It brought DC back to prominence. Unfortunately, when Man of Steel came out, it got a very, like, you know, mixed reaction on comic book fans. A lot of fans were expecting to see a full, fully formed Superman, where in which that movie was more of an origin story. Um, I still think fans, some fans don't really understand it, but that's okay. I really think that Batman v Superman is going to help flesh that out a little more. I really don't, I don't think it's going to flesh it out to the where people are going to fully accept how Man of Steel is and how Superman is in this universe until maybe the next Superman's, um, the real, the true follow-up sequel to Man of Steel, which is probably going to come in the near future. But, you know, I think Batman v Superman was going to further help flesh out Superman's character. But, you know, a lot of people are complaining mainly about, you know, hey, this these, these this, this movie, especially when they saw the trailer, they complained that it was a little too dark, a little too gloomy. And I still think that's like just because they just probably saw the Star Wars trailer and that was trailer was just so hyped and it was it has so much you know nostalgia in it that when you see this 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 trailer was a very dark and somber trailer and it, this movie looks very dark and somber. I'm pretty sure it's gonna have its you know lighter moments. Of course, you know I mean they're not gonna just have the whole movie you know made at like you know during the evening. But at the same time, you got to look at this is not just a movie with Superman. This is a movie with Batman in it. And Batman is that type of character. Batman is a character that expresses himself through the night. He uses the night as a weapon. And also as a representation of who he is within himself. Um, I think that, you know, Zack Snyder has more control over this film than he's ever had. You know, as you can look at Man of Steel, Christopher Nolan was the... A producer on Man of Steel, you know, he was one of the producers of Man of Steel, and he, you get, you could feel his touch on that movie. Not that it was a negative. I, I think that it was cool that he helped Zack Snyder start this universe here right after he ended his trilogy with Batman. And now in this movie, you can see Chris Nolan's more hands off. He's doing his own thing now. Shout out to Interstellar because Interstellar was one of the best movies last year, and I will be doing a review on that soon. Just a little side note there, but um. I just wanted to say that Christopher Nolan now he plays the executive producer role. He's a lot, um, he has a lot less hands on this film, and you could tell by the aesthetic of the actual teaser trail that um, that Zack Snyder has a lot more control, creative control, and he's really putting his vision on it. Um, just a couple of notes here is that you could also see that Zack Snyder in the in the Man of Steel movie, Amir Macri was the cinematographer, and Amir Macri did movies such as. Fast and Furious, Bad Boys 2, and either Transformers, Agents, Age of Extinction. But now Zack Snyder, for this Batman v Superman, added Larry Fong, who's a person who's been his cinematographer since 300, Watchmen, Sucker Punch, and the guy also did Super 8, which is a pretty good film. Uh, so now he's bringing a lot more of his men in it to work with him on this film. So I really think you're really going to get Zack Snyder's full vision. And if you've seen Watchmen, if you've seen um, 300, if you've seen... Man of Steel, and also even Sucker Punch, which some people might not like the film as a whole, but this, visually, the film is pretty stunning. I think visually, the film was very creative, and I love Zack Snyder's visuals, and I think that Zack Snyder knows that this movie, a lot is hanging on in this movie. He knows that he's been given the keys to this whole universe, to DC, and he knows that in order to make this work, he has to separate himself from Marvel. You know, it's not something new. It's not something that he does that he's not aware of. He knows that if he doesn't separate this brand from the Marvel brand, everything becomes convoluted and everything gets mixed together. And you can't tell which from which. And if I was a fan, if I see that this is the same thing as what I'm getting with Marvel, I'll just choose Marvel because Marvel has a bigger reputation, especially, you know, with all the films they're pushing out have been gold so far. I mean, you know, when you could just throw out a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and make a great movie out of it and it just and it gross as much money as that movie did you know that you can almost put out anything and you know you you have an, a direct audience i think um you know Zack Snyder says i'm going to tackle a little bit more of an adult audience but still be able to cater to like some of the young, younger audience when necessary um you know and i think that you know Kevin Sujihara is going to who's or who's the um CEO um of uh Warner Brothers, you know, and uh, he he's he's looking out for you know the best interest of the best interest. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the best interest of DC, and uh, basically he he knows deep inside that. 
the best interest for DC is to be a totally different brand of comic book um, movies. And I believe that he's doing that. I believe that you can see that in the teaser trailer. I believe that you can see that within how they're tackling these characters, look-wise, aesthetic-wise. And I think that we should all be prepared to, to see something new. One of the most important things I really want to end this podcast with is don't forget the best thing about having all these movies is having a choice. If you don't have a choice between your comic book movies, then guess what? You're going to have a monopoly. And as much as I love Marvel, as much as I love going to check out uh, Iron Man film or Avengers film or Captain America film, I know that if I don't have my choices, if I can't go from Avengers to X-Men, if I can't go from X-Men to Spider-Man to Spider-Man to Batman, Batman to so on and so forth, then guess what? We have a monopoly. And guess what? A monopoly is never good within any specific, you know, market. Because guess what? You have no competition. Without having competition, you lose that, that sense of choice. And that's what we want as comic book fans. What we want as moviegoers. We want a choice. If every movie looked the same, if every movie had a similar aesthetic and had a similar feel and similar plot, then guess what? We're not getting anything different. You know, and we're just basically, we're cheating ourselves in many ways. And I'm glad that, you know, Kevin Sujahara or Zack Snyder and everybody else at Warner Brothers is at least attempting to give us something new. Um, And, you know, I hope that they don't buckle under what, you know, people outside might say. They don't have to be Marvel. They have to be DC. And that is how you survive. And that is how you separate yourself from the pack. Be yourself. Because that's the only thing that's going to make you different. And that's the only thing that's going to prove that you are something worth seeing. Is if you are separating yourself from others. You, you know, look at Marvel and, and uh, as I know they have. And look at them and say, okay, I see how they did it. And you learn from them. But don't emulate them. You know, it's different between learning and emulating. Learn from your teachers. But don't become your teachers. Learn from your students and your peers. Don't become your students and your peers. That will end this podcast today. Uh, future, um, our next podcast coming up is going to be talking more about uh, the upcoming slate of DC fans. As I said, this is called the dawn of DC. DC's on the rise. Slowly but surely. They have no movie this year, but they have their movies coming out next year. And their slate is very interesting. They're doing a very different way of how they're going to attack um, coming out um, as a pair, as compared to Marvel and Fox with X Men, so it's going to be interesting to see how their strategy is going to compare in the years to come. And uh, this is Chris on the mic. Feel free to subscribe if you like, and also feel free to comment below. Tell me if you tell me what your views is on compared to how you think that DC is attacking their universe and their movies. Do you think it's a smart way that they're doing it? Do you think it's a stupid way? Do you think, hey, maybe they should do more like Marvel? Or do you think that they're actually doing the perfect way? And then, and do you agree with me? If you don't, feel free to get at me. Tell me that, hey, Chris, you're wrong. And then I'll tell you, hey, I'm right. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks a lot. This is Chris on the mic sign off, and I'll see you for the next episode. All right, baby, one, God bless. And don't forget, you all have a voice. Keep using yours. We all have a mic. Thank you.